Hello, it's Dr. Heather Yost, and welcome back to the Take Your Life Back Summit. Our mission and purpose in doing this summit is we really want you to feel hope, find answers, and ultimately start healing. I have the honor and privilege of talking to over 21 experts to, to see what their roadmaps are out of chronic pain, fatigue, and autoimmune disorders. And today I'm excited to welcome Dr. Nancy Mullins. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about her. She's an MTHFR genetic medicine expert. She works with people who are willing to use diet and genetics-based nutritional supplementation who want to increase their well-being and energy, enhance their immunity, lift their mood, fine-tune their genetic function, and get their lives back. Dr. Mullen understands that chronically ill people are desperate for symptom resolution. Their lives are devastated by disease processes, some of which are life-threatening. She offers them something better than mainstream solutions by applying her understanding of Dr. Amy Yasko's careful method. She has studied at a number of exceptional institutions, the University of Pennsylvania, Tufts University School of Medicine, and the University of Chicago Hospitals and Clinics. And she excels at integrating the results of biochemical and genetic testing into sustained clinical improvement. Dr. Mullen has succeeded with patients who can confounded the specialists at Massachusetts General Hospital, the Mayo Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic, Stanford, and many well-known integrated medical doctors. When recommending her, her patients say, this is the woman you need to see. She really knows how to handle tough clinical problems. So thank you so much for joining us. What first made you really stand out to me, I mean, you can, you can see there's some of our mission is so similar. I mean, I jumped on your website to learn more about you and right on your website, it says at the top, feel hope, find healing. And I knew on some level we were kindred spirits with our mission. Throughout, I think all of our lives, there's a lot of twists and turns that help us get to where we are in our mission and our purpose and our jobs and our lives. What were some of the twists and turns that you went through? How did you end up where, where you are? Well, fortunately, I did not have to get really sick to, you know, to, to figure this out. But I did get, uh, I had a surprise um, when I was about like late 30s. Uh, I had a gynecologist say, you have a mass on your ovary and you need surgery. And I thought, I don't know if I said it out loud, but I thought to myself, you need your head examined because that's like the last thing I would ever think of doing. Like I had no uh, illusions about what surgery would be anyway. So I, I didn't know what it was, but I figured if it were going to kill me, it, 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 I, I, I monkeyed around with vitamins for about three years, and I figured if this thing was anything really serious, I should be pretty sick by now. And I wasn't, but it wasn't getting better. And what happened was that my mother came to town. My mother lived on the East Coast and came to LA and brought a book called The Immune Power Diet. At that time, there was no food allergy testing, right? All that came later. This book uh, outlined what they called the sinister seven, seven foods that you should take out of your diet in order to remove a whole host of symptoms. And I thought, well, it didn't, it didn't mention, I figured at this point, I figured I had endometriosis. I figured that's what it was. Uh, but I uh, didn't mention endometriosis, but it did mention PMS. And endometriosis and PMS are both hyperestrogen syndromes, too much estrogen in your body. So I, I went on the diet, and like within 24 hours, I got relief. I know, I was astonished. <laughs> I know, within 24, I'm not saying that the size of the mass went down or anything, but I had been in pain, and I had been think, really thinking about surgery, but I was holding out, and, um, and within 24 hours, there was relief, and so that, re that was stunning, because I didn't know... I. 
that there would be anything outside of allopathy, right? They teach you, oh no, we're the ones who know medicine. We're the only ones who know, <laughs> know medicine. So I was really astonished. So that set me on fire and I started out on the highways and the byways to find out what else was out there. Well, then I started treating autism and then, uh, all right, so I started, I was, I am a psychiatrist. I was, so I was now treating mental illness with diet and food allergy testing and certain supplements. I, then the autism uh, epidemic started and I started treating autistic kids and, and, and within that context, I met Amy Yasko, Dr. Amy. She is a geneticist. Uh, well, she has a PhD in molecular biology and she studied, she worked in genetics at Yale and then she got a degree in naturopathy. So, and she's just a very careful, precise person. And, and I, I listened to what she had to say. Uh, and at that time, it was called Dan, Dan Doctors, to feed autism now. And they were all using these kind, sort of allopathic techniques, right? Um, broad stroke, stroke kinds of stuff and supplementation that was not, was not very specific to the individual. And Amy was being much more careful than that. She was looking very carefully at the, the biochemistry of the person and addressing their issues and, and their biochemistry very, very specifically. So for example, if this person needed magnesium, it wasn't going to be just throw any old magnesium at them. If we looked at citrate, if their citrate was high, we didn't give them magnesium citrate. We would not use magnesium glycinate because glycine is an excitotoxin if your glutamate is high. Things like that. So we'd use... Um, uh, ionic magnesium or some kind of magnesium that that both the magnesium and what it was complexed with were good and that seemed logical to me I I just and and so I started using it myself and have really benefited and this was about I guess 2005 when I started uh, using her protocol and at this point, I really, and, and the other thing was, there was this great hue and cry that went up. Oh, this woman is, you know, they, they didn't accept her into their community, the Dan doctors. Hmm. And I, uh, but I saw that unless you did this her way, unless you were very specific about your supplementation, uh, just as she was being, that of course it w wasn't going to work right. So I got, I decided to do it as close, use this protocol uh, as close to what she would do as possible. And, and we really got some very sick kids and subsequently to that, adults. Well, it really makes a difference when you look at the genetics and then, and, and then you look at the person's biochemistry and you supplement with the genetics in mind and apropos to their biochemistry. It makes a major difference. So I have ended up... Um, treating some really sick people and, and helping them make their way, which feels like my purpose in life. <laughs> so Amazing place to be, to, yeah. to be living that out every single day. I think um, we each, we all know that we're born with a unique DNA footprint, so to speak, that does, it does indeed um, affect our lives, but a lot of people might know it's in there, but like, what is DNA exactly? 
Ah, um, the, the DNA material exists in your body in strands, okay? And they are strands of bases, which um, the sequence of which is tremendously important. The sequence it, in this long strand of DNA, there will be a certain section in which the sequence of the base of the basis bases form a gene that specific little segment of RNA or DNA is active and is considered a gene and um, and that is what DNA that is what DNA is it's a sequence of nucleotide bases and it's really why we look like our mother or our father or maybe a long lost aunt or an uncle. Right. And it really contains sort of a makeup of our strengths and our weaknesses. Am I correct? Yes. But the, that's the bad news sort of. But the, and the good news is that you can impact the function of the DNA um, by what you eat and what vitamins you take. That's epigenetics. It's above or around the genes. So you're not just who you're born with, or it's not just my dad had it, so I have to, I get it. You can influence how those genes are, say, the switch turned on or maybe the switch turned off. That's right. That's right. And that's where this methyl group thing, a little, a tiny molecule, one carbon and three hydrogens, a tiny molecule, is so important. Methyl groups are primary epigenetic regulators. When a methyl group attaches to a gene, it turns the gene off. The gene cannot express. 80% of the genes in your body should not be expressing at any given time. So, wow. yeah, 80%. And if you don't have enough methyl groups to keep them quiet, then say a gene for autoimmunity will express when it shouldn't. Or, uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a, as good an example as any. Yeah, it'll turn the light on to a room that's one of the 80% that are supposed to stay dark. Right, exactly. Wow. So, yeah. And methyl groups are there. So, and that's why Yasko, um, when she did her genetic testing, when she put her genetic test together, uh, she focused very specifically on those genes that impact the formation of methyl groups. Um, Was that because a great majority of people don't have the correct methyl groups like it's a very common um it, mutation if you will there is a really important mutate uh, gene for the formation of methyl groups it's called m m t h f r uh and that is that is there is a heterozygous a one gene mutation in 40 percent of the population there is a two gene mutation in another 30% of the population. So that means that about 70% of the population has some kind of mutation in this really important MTHFR gene. However, it's not just the MTHFR gene itself that, in, that upon which methylation depends. It's the pathway. It's what's the genetics of the pathway that makes methyl groups. So, and methyl groups are important for uh, phospholipid membrane metabolism. Phospholipids are cell membranes, like the membranes of your brain or your gut. Um, uh, kind of like they, outer if, casings of a fruit, so to speak. Like, or how, would you, how, let's see. how would you say that for a lay person so they know what that means? Okay. Everybody has seen a picture of a cell, right? Um, the 
cell membrane, the, the, um, the, the, the thing that separates the cell off from everything else, the outside wrap, uh, wrapping of the cell, needs to be methylated needs to have methyl groups attached to it so that it can be fluid so that it can so that the membrane has enough fluidity to take in nutrients that it needs and to eject um, toxins that it doesn't want that so cell membrane fluidity is is a function of methylation the formation and deactivation of neurotransmitters is a function of methylation. Um, the, let's see, there's another really, um, well, you get, methylation is a central regulatory function. It's kind of like the traffic lights of your mm -hmm. biochemical pathways. That makes so, sense. and you need an you need an appropriate number of methyl groups, not too many, not too few. So it's very important. The good news is, though, that the MTHFR mutation can be bypassed by giving a specific form of folic acid. Just How a specific, cool is that? right? Very, yeah. very cool. But what's happening is uh, clinicians are coming to know about this and they are giving people tremendous doses of this kind of methyl folate. Where, whereas you need, to ha you need to balance the underlying pathway and then some people need to uh, build up slowly on this. Of, on the methylfolate. You don't need massive amounts of it. Most people don't need massive amounts of it. There are some who are homozygous, plus, plus. They have both genes mutated. Those people may need lots of this methylfolate, but they have to build up to it. Right. So it's, um, you know, anybody who will is going to get well with broad stroke solutions that's great but there are many people who will not and they really can't be just left for dead which uh, which is what happens um, you know unfortunately they, they've tried this and they've tried that and the other thing and they get really hopeless and that's sad that is so, so sad it is sad isn't it if 70 percent you know i think back that's such a, a powerful statistic if 70 percent of people have this how do we know well usually they have some kind of symptom like like it's really common that people with mthfr and and other concurrent issues say can't conceive and the gynecologist gynecologists now are testing for mthfr in in a person who can't conceive it's common that they test for it. But it's not like they really know how to treat it. <laughs> right, <laughs> but, right. The training isn't necessarily no. there for yeah. specialization. Can, what other symptoms could somebody present with, with um, an MTHFR mutation? Well, Lyme. A lot of, a lot of people with Lyme, do, I mean, most of us can get over a tick bite, right? Even right. when, even, uh, even a tick that has has Lyme, uh, you know, uh, Borrelia or the Lyme organism, most of us, our immune system will just will just flare up and get rid of it. Um, but people with MTHFR have impaired immunity because their methyl group formation is impaired, and they and methyl groups are necessary for immune function. So, so they just get, they get chronic Lyme, and that is such a problem, really. Uh, currently, uh, MDs are walloping them with antibiotics, and you know what antibiotics does to your gastrointestinal tract. Acute Lyme, 
you can do significant, you know, you can do antibiotics and with any luck, it'll get you up and over. But chronic Lyme really takes alternative approaches and immune enhancing approaches. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't, I don't like to see chronic Lyme patients get put on uh, massive doses of antibiotics because right. in the end, uh, it wears down the gastrointestinal mucosa and they just can't absorb the nutrition in their food. And then you really have a setup for chronic illness. Which ultimately, um, long-term or chronic usage of antibiotics is going to natively impact the immune system even further. Terrible. It's terrible, especially for people who are immune impaired. So right. then other uh, autoimmune diseases, Hashimoto's, right? Um, those, those are commonly because the gene that needs to be methylated for that, that the gene that should be methylated and silent is not silent. And, uh, and you get, an, you start, your body starts attacking its own, uh, cells. So, Which ultimately can lead to, geez, a variety of symptoms. Really a problem. Like chronic diseases and so on and Absolutely. so forth. Absolutely. Like rapid aging, allergic reactions, Alzheimer's. I mean, uh, anxiety. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read this list. Anxiety, arthritis, autism, bipolar disorder, bowel dysfunction, cancer, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, chronic bacterial infection, cytoskeletal breakdown, diabetes, Down syndrome, heart disease, herpes, Huntington's disease, language and cog cognition impairment, leaky gut, metal toxicity, miscarriage, mitochondrial disease, neural tube de defects, pneumonia, psoriasis, renal failure, Rett syndrome, schizophrenia, seizures, sleep disorders, lupus, and thyroid dysfunction. I mean, that's the whole gamut. That's, right. that's, <laughs> right? I, mean, I don't think, I don't think you missed anything. <laughs> oh, that's why I read them. I think what's, um, that, that list is kind of scary and daunting, but I think what's really cool and, and pretty incredibly empowering is that what you're saying is that we can test these genetic shifts, changes, or mutations, correct? We absolutely can. We can test them and we can use nutrition to circumvent and to get around the, the, the uh, problem. It's a nutritional pathway. It's, that's wonderful. The problem is that a lot of these folks are older or very toxic. You know, your gastrointestinal tract is so important in uh, your body's ability to fight disease. And if you have, if your gastrointestinal tract is not in, in good shape with the right bacteria, uh, that has to happen at the same time you try to optimize methylation. It's a two front thing. You're working on methylation and, get, and making sure the person has on board all the vitamins and minerals that they need. And you're also dealing with a problem, any problems in the gastrointestinal tract. And if the problems in the gastrointestinal tract are more as opposed to less, to fewer, then, then you, it's, gonna, it's harder work and the person will be more toxic and you'll just have to... Uh, you'll just have to keep on working on it. That a longer road to recovery. It's a longer road, yeah. So, so that, to me, that sounds like obviously we should all be thinking about getting genetic testing really as young as possible. But do you have a recommendation that you feel like, I mean, you were late 30s and notice shifts and changes. Should people wait till the 20s, 30s, or even as kids, should we potentially know what we're dealing with with a simple blood draw, right? It's a simple, well, uh, uh, 23 and Me is a saliva test. It's not even a blood draw. Um, it's not, I mean, I would say, yes, of course, yes, you should, you should know about this. But if your child is well, 
and really not having any immune problems and you're not vaccinating <laughs> and giving the kid problems, um, then there, there may not be any reason to spend that money, right? But if your child is not well, if he's having learning disorders or, uh, or you know, developmental delay, if there's, any, if there's anything wrong, yes, you want to get genetics so you know how to supplement, right? So where do people get the testing done? Well, Dr. Amy has a test. That is a blood test. She just um, uses, she will send you a test kit and that blood is more accurate than saliva, okay? Saliva has the issue. I haven't seen, what I've seen with, okay, so there's Dr. Amy's test, which is blood, which is very accurate. And if anything looks wrong with it, she will certainly research that for you. But, um, and then there is 23andMe, which is available online, and it's a saliva test. Uh, and um, the issue with saliva testing, I haven't seen that it's inac inaccurate so much as I have seen there, that there are, um, there, they just don't find all, the, all of the genes that you'd like to know about. So there will be, you know, you'll get a result back for a certain gene that will be NA, no answer. They didn't, oh, they didn't find it. And that's, that's inconvenient because then you have to work as if they did find a, a mutation in that gene. You have, to, you have to err on the conservative. It's not, it's not that hard to do. And the savings is considerable. But, um, you know, Dr. Amy makes the point, this is a test you do once in your life and uh, you want it to be accurate. But and I think that, that, yes, of course, she's right. Uh, but I think that people are in terrible shape for money. So that 23andMe is a less expensive test, and that is the test most people are doing. And it might be at least a place to start. Yes, yes, because the money, if you need to then, if you need to then do additional genetic testing in the course of the, the money that you will spend is not that much in the course of treating a chronic illness. Right. Considering you let it, the illness run its course, you're going to have a lot more land to terrible out of. Terrible. Problems yeah. Get worse as we age. They don't tend to just naturally. No, matter. no. As you age, the telomeres start to shorten. Right. Telomeres are like uh, they they are the ends of the chromosome. They are like the plastic on a shoelace. They keep the shoelace from unraveling. Um, telomeres keep the genes from unraveling and as you get older they get shorter and you start as your cells replicate the tele the, they you get mistakes and therefore you get less well as you get older so it's definitely you definitely want to start early if you are having things wrong go you know if you're having issues with your body start with diet and and supplementing around them and get a careful diet you know i heard someone discussing the standard american diet mm -hmm. nobody who eats a standard american diet can be well that's it it's made to get you sick right. i you know whether who knows what they're thinking? I don't know. Uh, I just can't relate to it. But the standard American diet is full of pesticides and problems and things that will grow the wrong organisms in your gastrointestinal tract, and you will be sick if you're eating that way. So, Can you expand upon what diet is good for you? I, um, yeah, well... For most chronically ill people, uh, 
the, I know right now that a ketogenic diet is a really popular diet. Ketogenic being mostly fat and protein and really no carbs so that you form ketone bodies. However, Dr. Amy insists this is not a healthy diet. And I agree with her. I think most people need some carbs, but I, my own preference is that people stay away from grains. Grains are hard to digest and, and anything you don't digest, the organisms in your gastrointestinal tract will use for food. So you'll get you'll get uh, yeast overgrowth or the wrong organisms growing off of the, of the grain that is sitting in your gastrointestinal tract. So I, I um, prefer to see people eat things like, um, you know, soaked a, a little bit. If, if you don't ha eat any starchy type carbs at all, you're likely to get really hungry. No, you're, right? So you need some starchy type carbs, but not much. Maybe a quarter of a cup, a couple of times a day um, with all the rest of, of the fat and protein that you're eating. You want to eat vegetables and, uh, and eliminate grains. You can eat red potato. You can eat uh, millet, which is a seed, not a grain, soaked millet, buckwheat, quinoa, um, so preferably soaked, and then nuts and seeds, and you know the the rest of the other, the rest of the other uh, combined, you know, fat, carb, and and protein uh, foods, but. I really, you really want to stay away from refined sugar and refined processed food of any kind. You want to eat food as it, as it exists in nature and right. not, not refined food. You really, it'll make a difference for your body and you want to eat organic, even yeah. though, right? Even though it's more expensive, you can't eat. And, and you want to eat animals that have not suffered. You know, you want to have a conscience about what uh, kind of animal you will buy. It's so sad. It anyway, is. I know. We won't get into <laughs> the point to, to just sort of wrap up what you said there. The point would be to eat the way nature brought food to us. Um, eat, be kind, you know, with the food that we're eating and bringing to our plates and be conscious of what we're eating. I mean, I think so that this we could talk about forever too, but so much eating is kind of unconsciously eating and mm -hmm. not really eating to nourish the body and eating to, to even, you know, maybe just eating to nourish the soul or you in the moment, like not really eating for long-term health and longevity. I, you know, it's amazing. My brain like turns off when I'm reaching for something that I should not have. My brain just, it's like, it's like, hello. <laughs> you know, and I, so I can understand how people do that, but really uh, you need to sharpen your awareness because you'll feel so much better if you're not putting into your body things that you should not be eating. Very well said. Very well said. And I think what you had said earlier too, to reiterate that for our listeners, it's important to get testing. And then ideally, even though we've given some pointers on diet, and you've mentioned what not to eat and some things to eat. It's important, isn't it, to get the testing, but get somebody to guide and coach you through the recovery or the balancing out of the, the expression of your ge genetic material. Yes. Are we talking about genetic testing or are we talking about food allergy well, testing? I do, well, both probably, but really genetic testing. I mean, you had made a point about the testing and then making sure that you're, you could actually take too much of something. So I think there's so many people out there that are really self-diagnosing, self-treating, and even choosing oh. supplements from, say, Costco or Walmart. And yeah. if, if there's a whole spectrum of supplementation. You're not going to necessarily get the same thing or even close right. to the same thing right. um, at, at one of those big superstores. Absolutely. You also have some guidance because it's right. something can help Absolutely. You. Yes, absolutely. 
Um, I, don't, I wish that we could talk forever. I feel like I could pick <laughs> your brain and chat with you for a long time, but I know I want to be respectful of your time and we're getting sort of close to the end. You have been so generous and so kind to gift a few things to our listeners today. Do you want to tell us what those are? Well, the first is a lecture that I gave to a, a, a group of functional medicine students. And I tried to make that as simple as possible, but it lays out, you, I talked about what a gene is, but you can, in this, in this lecture, uh, you'll see there are, there, it's a webinar, and you'll see the, the um, PowerPoints of what a gene is. And I go on from there to discuss how important it is to get it right with genetics and get it right with supplementing for your genetics. And then I talk about testing and the way Dr. Amy and I interpret testing, how that's different from the way other doctors do and why it's, why it's more more effective, why you can expect to get a different outcome when you supplement for your genetics and you're careful about your supplementation so that you're watching the first substance in a vitamin and the thing it's conjugated to, and you're interpreting, uh, you're interpreting genetic, you're, you're, you're testing, your laboratory testing, in the way that Yasko points out. It's, it's more effective, it works better. So that's that lecture. Then I have a, an ebook on methyl groups, which is as simple as I could make it um, about why methyl groups are important. And then I also included an ebook on thyroid because thyroid is, is it's tremendously important. Uh, and I don't know how many doctors are still only using a TSH test, only using one test to, to diagnose the most central metabolic gland in your body. Incredible, one test. So um, I, I talk in that thyroid ebook about uh, what, how to, what the common mistakes are out there in thyroid testing and treatment and how you can circumvent them. So Awesome. Awesome. Sounds like everybody okay. really could benefit from those. For sure. Thank you for gifting us that. Oh, my Before pleasure. we close up, I've been asking every expert the same couple of questions just for fun. Um, if I came into your kitchen and opened up your refrigerator, what would be two things I would find every time? You would find eggs every single time because it's, a, it's fast food. It's good fast food. And you would find cranberry sauce and mayonnaise because, right, yeah, uh, because I eat a lot of turkey, and so I want that cranberry sauce. And once again, in order to not put it on a sandwich kind of thing, right? And mayonnaise is – cranberry sauce and mayonnaise, you can – lay down a bed of cranberry sauce and mayonnaise on a plate and then drop a soft boiled egg on top of it. And it's really delicious. And you're not eating grain. You're getting some fat, right? Uh, so that you're, so that it sticks to your ribs and the cranberry sauce makes it sweet. It's, it's wonderful. You have to put some salt on it too. Yeah. But that, that, that's what I, that's what you would find in my fridge. So if you were stuck on a desert island and you can only have two products, two okay. products or supplements, what would you, what would you take? I, I have to admit, I knew you were going to ask me this question and I, I, um, think I thought about it and I would, I would take Dr. Amy's all in one. It is her multivitamin. I've never, I haven't heard anybody choose a multivitamin. This is a common question for the end of, uh, you know, one of these talks. Um, nobody has chosen a multivitamin. Anyway, I would choose her multivitamin and lithium, lithium orotate, the nutritional lithium. I can't tell you how many people who come into my practice are low lithium. 
there is a mutation it's a in the mtr gene it's a different gene from mthfr but if you have a mutation in that gene you're going to spill lithium and unless you have sufficient lithium in your body you will not up you will not take b12 and folic acid up into the cell and b12 and folic acid are absolutely essential to methyl group formation so Desert Island, I imagine I'd be, well, Desert Island, you don't know or you don't have, there's no fish around, but anyway, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank My you pleasure. For Thank you. Today. Thank you for Keep doing this. Awesome work. Oh, really Thank you very to much. I'm you and spend some time with you. We'll do it. Okay, awesome. thank you. Well, as we wrap up today, thank you to all of our listeners for being a part of our Take Your Life Back Summit. Don't forget tomorrow morning to watch your email because every morning we're going to bring you a new expert in your inbox for you to watch for that day. Take care, be well, and we'll see you tomorrow.